Hello. Hi friends. My name is Nilesh. This video is the continuation of Terraform features and the Terraform series where I explore different capabilities of Terraform. So far in this series, we have looked at three different things, starting with how to get Terraform installed, then how to create the simplest resource in Microsoft Azure, which is the resource group. And in the last video, which was the third part of this series or third video in this series, we looked at how to use the cross referencing of different objects within the Terraform. And we created three different resources and we extended that resource group, which was created in the second part to include a virtual network and also a subnet in that virtual network. And we looked at how to cross reference uh, things across these different types of objects. Now, in this video, we are going to unlock the secrets of making Terraform configurations more dynamic, reusable and efficient. If you want to know how to learn about making the Terraform variables, how to declare the Terraform variables, how to use them and how to manage them like a pro, stay tuned in this video. Let's get started and see how to work with variables in Terraform. So the prerequisites for this, in case you want to do uh, hands-on or in case you want to follow along what I've been doing is you need to have the Terraform CLI installed. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code and I have the HashiCorp Terraform and Azure Terraform extensions installed and also the Azure CLI, which is configured or which is connected to my Microsoft Azure subscription. I demonstrated these things in the earlier video. So in case you have uh, not seen them and you want to start with this video, I suggest that you have a look at those earlier videos. These are the different steps we will be using uh, during various of our videos or during the different videos we are doing. Uh, we will initialize the Azure Resource Manager or Azure RM as the provider using Terraform init. Then we will plan the resources that we are going to deploy to Microsoft Azure and then apply those and optionally we will delete them uh, once the video recording is done or once that particular feature is explained. So what resources will be provisioned in this particular video is uh, the resource group. We will have the virtual network and a subnet. All these three are linked to one another. The problem statement we have is we should be easily able to manage the resources across multiple files. So in the last video, we looked at how to modularize the Terraform configurations file and we had different files for the provider configuration. Then we had a different file for the resource group and we had different file for the networking related sections. In this video, we will see how we can use uh, these different files and manage them more effectively. We already looked in the previous video that if we had to change certain things, we might have to navigate through all these different files to make those changes. The second problem statement is we should be uh, having a easier method to create resources across different environments. Now, when we work with infrastructure as code and when we work with uh, these projects in live environment or in enterprise scenario, we have different environments where we would like to create these resources. This could be like a dev environment. It could be the system in integration environment or SIT, UAT, pre-production, production. And with minimal changes, we would like to replicate these setup across these different environments. Next, we would like to create resources with different values. Your organization might be using different conventions for different types of resources or it might want to create resources in uh, different places. Like in case of Microsoft Azure, let's say I want to create my resources which are related to dev environment and UAT in Australia Southeast region. But when it comes to pre-production and production, I might want to create them in Australia Central region, for example. It could also be like in terms of the naming convention, we might want to prefix or suffix our resources with things like the environment name associated with that. If I take the example of the resource group and the VNet or the subnet that we are creating, we might want to create things like TF dev resource group or TF dev VNet uh, based on whatever is the convention we follow in our organization. So 
Based on these different requirements, we are going to see how we can use Terraform variables to achieve all these things. So let's get into the demo mode and I'm going to use or I'm going to refer to where we left at the last time and build on top of that. So let's start by looking quickly at what we did in the earlier video. This is where we configured the uh, Terraform related settings for Terraform and the Azure RM provider in provider.tf. Then we have the resource group, which defines the resource group name and the location for our resource group. And finally, we have the network related, the Azure RM uh, virtual network and the subnet uh, resource definitions. Now, if I want to use variables for this, uh, variables are typically used in programming languages for things which changes across uh, different objects. So let's say I want to uh, parameterize the names which are used for my resources. And in case of the resource group, uh, it could be the location which could change across different environments. So based on that, I want to make this as variable. So to do that, let's expand the 04 uh, variables folder here. And let's see how we can define the variable. The uh, approach is very similar to creating a resource in Terraform. We use this keyword called variable and we give a name for the variable. Now for the resource group name, I'm naming it as resource underscore group underscore name. I'm specifying a default value of TF resource group here and specifying the type as string. Now in this particular example, all the variables that I have or that I intend to use are of the type string. And towards the later part of this video, we will also see what are the other types of variables or data types supported for creating the variables. Then I also create variables for the resource group location and specify the default value as Australia Southeast. And I specify a description so that we know why this particular variable is used for. In this case, I am specifying the name of the resource group location. And when it comes to the virtual network name, we describe it as name of the virtual network. Now it is not necessary to provide the default value for all the variables. And as we can see for the virtual network name and subnet name, we have not provided a default value here. And when we create the uh, resource, we will have to provide these values on the uh, command line or using different methods which are supported by Terraform. So let's go and quickly look at uh, how do we use these variables. So this is the part where in the variables.tf we have centralized or we have consolidated all the variables that we want to use for creating our three resources. Now if I go back to the provider or uh, provider we are not changing anything so I will leave the provider as is. But if we go to the uh, network or the resource group, let's start with the resource group, which is the simplest of all the files we have. And to refer to the resource group name, we can just say uh, keyword var for variable var dot, and then whatever is the name of the variable we want to use. In this case, we are referencing the resource group name and resource group location for the two attributes. If I go into the network, same way I can refer to the virtual network name and the subnet name. Now you can see that there is this cross referencing which we did in the earlier video and I'm not changing that. I'm keeping that cross referencing bit the same. We are changing only the attribute at the resource level, not at the cross reference resource level. So that's a point to note in this case. Now let's go and see how we can use this in the actual planning of our resources. I'm inside this 04 variables folder and you can see the list of files which are there in this location. So let's start by using Terraform init here to initialize our uh, resources or our provider, which is the Azure RM provider. I had initialized it earlier and that is why the process here completed very fast. The next step is Terraform plan. 
Now, when I run the Terraform plan, this will look at those variables that we have defined and the files, and it will try to come up with the resources which will be created, updated, or deleted. And in the output, we see that all the resources will be created here. And let's look at the attributes of those or the properties of those resources. For the resource group, we see the location is Australia Southeast and the name is TF Dev Resource Group. And when it comes to the Azure RM subnet, the name of the resource is uh, TF Dev uh, VNet for the VNet and TF Dev subnet for the subnet. Now the question here is, we did not specify these two values as the default values. How did Terraform come to know about these values or how did Terraform assign these values for the TF Dev subnet and TF Dev VNet? There is a convention which Terraform follows and that is based on the names of the files. So I have this file named as terraform.tfvars and in here I have assigned these values. So if we look at the resource group, we see that the resource group name is given as TF Dev Resource Group and uh, the resource group location as Australia Southeast and I've specified the virtual network name and the subnet name. So variables.tf is where we define the variables and then .tfvars is the place where we assign values to those variables. This is based on the convention that terraform.tfvars is the default variable assignment file. So based on that, we can see uh, the values are assigned here. And that is why the name of the resource group is also changed to TF dev resource group. Whereas in the variables, we had given the default value as TF resource group. So now if I go and apply this plan, it will go and create these resources. So let's go and do that step. Terraform apply. And it will use this plan, which we saw just now to create these resources. And it's asking us for the confirmation whether we want to create these resources. I forgot to provide the auto approve like that, uh, which I had shown in the earlier video. So uh, with the confirmation that I want to create these resources, it will be created with all these values that have been specified or that have been inferred based on the uh, terraform.tfvar file. Now, while these values are getting created or while these objects are getting created, the question comes to our mind is, what if I want to provide different value for different environment? So if you remember at the problem statement, I had specified that I want to create different values for my dev environment and other environments. For that purpose, we can separate these into different files and we can have a file say with the name as dev.tfvars and we can specify the values that we want to override. Now in this case, Again, I want to, let's say, overwrite the default value, which is provided in terraform.tfvars to change it to include 04, which is like, let's say a module name in this case. And I want to have this name for the resource group as TF Dev resource group 04. I'm not changing anything for the location. I still use the location, which is the default value. Then I want to use the virtual network name and again, uh, append that with 04. And for the subnet, I want to append that with the 04 again. So TF dev subnet 04 and TF dev vnet 04 are the resource names I want to create. Now, using the default apply command, we see that the resources have been completed or created. And if I run the Terraform uh, show command here or terraform state uh, and list command it will show us the list of resources which are created we can also verify this by going into the azure portal and 
going into the resource group and looking at the TF dev resource group here, which has the TF dev VNet, the virtual network, and inside that VNet, if we navigate to the subnet, we can find the TF dev subnet here. So with that, using this default TF uh, vars file or terraform.tf vars file, we saw how we can provide the default values. Now let's go and see how we can do it for the specific environment. So if I run the terraform plan command and I provide a file here, which is the var file. So the syntax is hyphen var file and I give dev dot tf vars as the name where I've defined the different overrides for my dev environment. So here we can see that it is going to replace the existing resource group name, which is named as the TF dev resource group to TF dev resource group 04 and the TF dev vnet to TF dev vnet 04 and same way the subnet would be replaced. Same way, if I want to use instead of the dev, if I want to use, let's say the production settings, I can run the prod.tf vars as the var file. I can run the plan command with uh, var file as prod and we can see it is going to replace with the production resource group here, which is named as tf prod resource group. And uh, then same way the subnet and the vnet. So here the name is changed to TF prod vnet 04 and the subnet is changed to uh, TF prod uh, subnet 04. And also the resource group has been changed here. So let's look at that file. I didn't show that file earlier. So let's go into prod.tfvars. And here I'm replacing or I'm overriding the names of all the four variables, resource group name, location, network name or virtual network name and the subnet name. Now it might also happen that sometimes we want to run these commands, but we also want to override certain things. Now let's say that I want to use whatever are the values which are specified in my prod.tfvars, but along with that, I want to override maybe just one single variable. In this case, I want to override the resource group name and change it to ng resource group. So if I run this plan command and I give these values here, you can say that it is again going to take these settings into consideration and it will first consider the values from the prod.tfvars and specifically for the resource group name, it's going to change the name to resource group, ng resource group. So that is the replacement here we can see in the output. So we can do mix and match. We can have some variables which are defined in the tfvars file with the extension as tfvars and we can provide the environment name or any other name like the prod or dev UAT, for example. And we can also specify individual variable to be replaced or overridden using this syntax by saying instead of hyphen var file, we are going to use just hyphen var and we specify the name and value, the key value pair for that variable. These are the different ways which we can use to define our variables and uh, assign values to them and make use of those variables to create different resources. Now I can run the terraform uh, destroy command to destroy the resources or to delete the resources. And I can specify the auto approve command here just to delete all the resources we have created. Let's switch back to the slides again and have a quick recap of what did we do. So these were the resources we provisioned, resource group, virtual network and subnet. And we use the variables to manage different aspects related to the namings of these resources. We can also think of the variable precedence or the order in which the variables are 
the values for the variables are assigned by Terraform. Uh, first and foremost, Terraform will look at environment variables. This is similar to the programming languages. If you work with any mainstream programming language, uh, we know that there are ways in which we can specify the environment variables and we can provide the values for these variables in uh, different ways. So there is this precedence order which is followed when the values for these variables are resolved. And same way, Terraform also gives the preference or it starts by looking at environment variables to see if the variable is set as part of the environment variable. Next, it will look at the terraform.tf bars if the file is present. And this is the approach we used in this example where we specified the values for our uh, four objects or three objects and four values which could change across different environments and the ones that we wanted to uh, modify for our use case. It can also look at uh, terraform.tfwars.json uh, if it is present. Then the next thing would be any file which has .auto.tfwar or .auto.tfwars.json as the file name. And then comes the individual value replacement using the var option or the var file option on the command line. So we looked at this uh, when we planned for that resource and for the production and we overridden the value for the resource group name to be a specific resource group which merged all the uh, values coming from the default values as well as the ones from the command line. So now the question comes is, here is like a homework for you or here is a tricky question for you. If I switch the parameters, the order of parameters, and if I run this command terraform plan hyphen var resource group name equal to ng resource group, and then I provide the hyphen var file prod.tfwars, which value would it pick? Is it the one from the command line, which is ng resource group or the one from the var files? Do let me know in the comments what you think will be the output of this. The next thing is about the type of variables. And in this particular example, we looked at only the string type, but Terraform supports other simple types like the numbers and Boolean. And it also supports complex types like list, set, map, object, tuple. And in the future videos, we would probably explore some of these depending on the different use cases. Now let's look at the benefits of using variables in Terraform. In our case, we had only three or four files here and we were managing the values for different objects in those three or four files. But imagine that you have a real uh, enterprise grade Terraform setup and you might have various objects and the files can be numerous in that particular case. So using variables, it allows us to unify all the things that change across different uh, objects and having a view of all the different values that can be changed for that particular Terraform module or that particular Terraform setup. Uh, it's an easy way to manage the resources by having everything in one single place. The second thing is uh, it provides us a way to create resources with different values in different environments. And as we saw in this example, we used uh, three different files, the default Terraform variables file, then the one for dev and one for the production. So it allows us to modularize this and gives us that option to uh, manage resources and manage variables in an easy manner. It also provides us a flexibility to provide default values, which can be overridden uh, using different approaches and using uh, what we saw earlier, the order of precedence. And it also has these multiple levels of overrides. Uh, so we can start with the default values in the variables.tf itself. Then we can also specify them in tf uh, terraform vars.tf var files and then the individual files for the environment as well as the override at the CLI level or the command line level. If you look at the definition of the objects that we had, the uh, virtual network and the subnet, we still had some part which was sort of hard coded. These address prefix, which you can see in the screenshot there, uh, 
10.0.2.0 and then slash 24 that is currently hard coded now as a homework again for you to understand things better you can go ahead clone this repository and make a pull request or make a change and raise a pull request to make this into a variable as well that's a good way to learn things and you can contribute to this repository you can find this on github and we can uh, enhance the capabilities of this together uh, with that we come to the end of this video and here are some of the references in case you would like to know more about what we have done so far and uh, how to get things better or how to make things better using terraform i have also put a link to the playlist related to all the videos of uh, terraform that i have done on the channel so with that we come to the end of the video thank you for watching this until next time code with passion and strive for excellence in case you find this video useful please hit the like button subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what other things you would like to see on this channel whether you like something or whether you uh, disagree with the content that i am creating i would love to hear some feedback from uh, you guys thanks for watching this